Okay, we are going to do lesson 11-1, which is two-step word problems. Now, the most important thing that we have to remember about word problems is that we have some rules, okay? If our answer is going to be bigger, after we read our word problem, if our answer is going to be bigger, we are either going to add or multiply those numbers together to get our answer. If our answer is going to be smaller than the numbers we have, then we are either going to subtract or divide. So first step, we ask ourselves, is our answer going to be larger or smaller than the numbers we're talking about? If it's larger, we've narrowed it down to two. If it's smaller, we've narrowed it down to two. Then we ask ourselves, do I have equal groups? If I have equal groups, then it has to be one of those two. Okay, if you don't have equal groups, then you can, you can uh, add or subtract. So you're adding or subtracting as equal groups. You're multiplying and dividing. I'm sorry. You're multiplying, dividing as equal groups. You're adding and subtracting as not equal groups. Okay. We've been doing this since the beginning of the year. So but the only difference to this is most of our word problems that we've been dealing with are um, have been multiplication and division because that's what we've been learning. But in this chapter, we have to decide which of these four operations are we going to do? Remember, those are your only four choices. You can either add or multiply, subtract or divide. There aren't any other hidden mathematical operations that you can use. Those are your only four, okay? So let's take a look at our worksheet here. Okay. We can draw a bar diagram to help us solve a two-step problem. The bar diagrams are always very helpful because our total or our biggest number goes on the top. We have to put these two numbers together to get to that bigger number. Okay? <clears throat> so complete each equation for each known quantity in the bar diagram. So if we're missing this number, okay, we know that this plus this equals this. Think of your fact family, right? This would go on top. This would go here. And our unknown would go there, okay? This plus this equals this. We also know that this minus that equals that, that minus that equals that. So instead of writing 124 plus what equals 185 and trying to count up from 124 to 185, which seems like it would take a really long time, <clears throat> we can subtract. We can take this big number. If we take this part of it away, that's going to leave us with this part because we put the two pieces together to make that big one. So if we take part of it away, that will leave us with that. So T is equal to 185 minus, minus 24, okay? With this one, we're going to put these two numbers together to get this one. So what two numbers are you going to add together to get that? Fill that in. You should have done 32 plus 25, okay? So let's look at number two. Jared has $236. He spent $135 paying bills. So he has this amount. He took that amount of money out of it. He says spent it. Spent means bye-bye. I subtracted it. He's going to earn $76 next week. So that's more money we're going to add into it. How much money will he have next week? Okay. Find and answer the hidden question. Well, that's how much money does he have after paying the bills. We need to take this amount and subtract this amount. And that's going to tell us how much we have now. Okay. So how much we have now is this amount minus the 153, and that will tell us how much money he has left. So this is 236 minus 153. So now do not do that in your head. You need to regroup. So just go over here and write 236 minus 153. Okay, so pause the video. Do your subtraction, regroup, and write your answer right here, right here. Okay, hopefully you're coming back now. If not, you need to pause. Thank you. Okay, 
6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 5 is a problem. 13 minus 5 is 8. So <clears throat> he has $83 left over. Okay. And if we checked 153 plus 83, if we put these two together, that should equal that. 6, 3, carry the 1, 236. So that's right. <clears throat> Use the answer to the hidden question to answer the original question. How much money will Jared have next week? Okay, well, let's look at it. Right now, he has $83 left over. He's going to earn $76. So let's look at this. Okay. He has 83. He's going to earn 76 more. So is our number, is our answer of how much money he's going to have going to be larger or smaller than those two numbers? It's going to be larger, right? He has $83. He's going to earn 76 more, so we need to put those numbers together. It's going to be larger. So we're either going to add those two numbers or multiply those two numbers. Well, do I have 83 groups of 76? Do I have equal groups? Do I want to multiply those two numbers and say I have 83 groups of 76? I wish I had 83 groups of $76, but I don't. I have $83 and I have $76. That is, in fact, not equal groups. I'm going to add those two numbers, okay? So if I want to add those two numbers, I put 83 and 76, okay? We're not going to do that in our head, okay? 3 plus 6 is 9, and 8 plus 7 is 15. So I should have, so we have 83 plus 76, and that should equal 159. So Jared will have $159 next week. <clears throat> okay, let's look at number four. We can draw bar, bar diagrams, and we will, but I also want us to look at, when we think of this, I want us to think of this, okay? And see if we can figure out which operation we want to use. Draw bar diagrams and write equations to solve. Aaron has 996 baseball cards. He sells 333 of them. Then he buys 165 baseball cards. How many baseball cards does he have? All right. Let's take this one period at a time. Okay. Draw bar diagrams and write equations to solve. Period. Okay. Is there anything we need to do right now? No. Okay. Aaron has 996 baseball cards. Period. All right, what do we need to do with that information? We need to write it. He has 996 baseball cards. Okay, he sells 333 of them, period. Okay, let's deal with that. He has 996, he sells 333 of them. How many does he have now? Okay, let's look at this. Is our answer going to be larger or smaller? He has 996. He sells 333 of them. Does he have, does he now have more than 996 or does now he have less than 996? He's just going to have less. He has 996. He's taking some away. He's selling some. They are flying the coop and leaving. So he's going to have less. So we can either subtract or divide. 996 and 333. Okay, well, do we have equal groups? We have 996 in one pile. We have 333 in another pile. Do we have equal groups? We do not. So, if we have equal groups, okay, we know what our answer is going to be smaller. If we have equal groups, we would subtract or divide. Or I'm sorry, we, would, we know we're going to subtract or divide. If we had equal groups, we would divide, but we don't. So what are we going to do? Subtract or divide, subtract or divide, subtract or divide. What's your answer? What's your answer? Subtract. Okay, so do that. Pause it and do that. Okay, so he now has 663 cards. We still have more problem to deal with, though. Okay, so now we're... We're done with that. We're done with that sentence. Now, then he buys 165 baseball, 
cards, period. All right, we need to deal with this. So he has 663 and he buys 165 more cards. Is our, the number we have now going to be larger or smaller? He had 663, he buys 165 more. How many does he have now? Larger or smaller? Should be larger. So we have 663 and 165. Our question is, do we wanna add those two numbers or multiply? Well, first of all, you don't know how to do that yet, so that should be a good answer for you, but do we have equal groups or are they just two numbers? They're just two numbers, two different numbers, so let's add them. Okay, go ahead and do that. All right, 828 cards is what uh, Aaron now has. All right, great job. See you tomorrow.